scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, just lay your hands if there is any part of your body you're trusting the Lord for healing. We'll be seated shortly. But while Minister Owe just stirred the atmosphere, again it was a confirmation that the Lord wanted to touch, to heal, to bless. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you move in the midst of your people, confirming the word bringing healing bringing miracles right now in the name of jesus every spirit that is back of any disease and any infirmity i come against you in the name of jesus i come against you in the name of jesus every stranger roaming around your body in the name that is above all names and by the power of the holy spirit i minister the life of jesus to you right now be healed in the name of jesus inside outside online be healed in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus that back problem I'm seeing a very severe back problem like pain around the back area in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a miracle right now yeah. hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to four families will be seated shortly but while I just closed my eyes, I saw a manifestation of the spirit of death. And I wanted to bring them out. There are families here that the spirit of death, we are ministers of life and it will not be under our watch that will allow the spirit of death to sweep over families in the name of Jesus Christ. Inside and outside, I declare as revealed to me by the spirit anyone here or any family here connected or appointed to death in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing at least four people I just saw like fire in the name of Jesus Christ for you and for all who are connected to you no matter what part of the world no matter where they are i decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now bring the lady that the power of god comes on right now death you are a spirit we stand by the grace of god my goodness 
see i know that we are here to hear the word but there is no point ministering when we know that there are people who have issues if the lord reveals this is because he wants to bring a miracle bring the lady there's a lady under the anointing i'm saying and then this at least four people Paras kuda shelatos kebriata. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death. I'm seeing two people at the overflow outside. Not the basement, the overflow outside. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, death, where is your sting? Please bring them out. I'm ministering to them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring them very quickly so that we'll save time. Very quickly, please help the ushers so that we'll save time. Who is Stephen? I'm hearing a name, Stephen. We'll be seated shortly, but I'm hearing a name, Stephen. The Lord is opening a new chapter. A new chapter. There is a lady outside the overflow outside who will begin to run by the spirit please whether you are an usher or not just hold her and lead her out so she does not injure herself outside hmm. who is steven Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name. I take authority over every spirit binding families and will not let them go. I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the reign of witchcraft and wickedness let it come to an end now 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 who brought this gentleman who came with this man Because I'm seeing a spirit of stroke. This is what I'm seeing. But the Lord is bringing him healing right now. I command that devil, let him go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't come out at random. Let's, we have to walk. Stephen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God is coming on one of you. And the Lord, I'm seeing a door opening in the realm of the spirit for your family. Right now, a door opening and the Lord is saying that delay is coming to an end. Coming to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, just this gentleman, I decree and declare, I'm seeing a chain around your waist. I lose you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lose you now. Every family here that is under the siege of darkness, please listen, please listen. Don't waste your time here every family that is under any siege doesn't matter how long it has been right now fire from heaven at the count of three 
in the name of Jesus I declare that siege broken one two three be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now hallelujah you're not wasting your time this is the house of god listen i'm seeing what looks like an arrow just pegging people and the lord is saying there are people here you are the ones ordained to be the lifters of your family but it looks like there are forces sitting on your destiny some of you are supposed to be preachers some of you are supposed to be anointed men and women but right now my god i'm seeing fire anyone here destined to be used by god to lift up the heads of your family but you are being kept down at the count of three i declare the power of god is coming on you bring them out one two three may that fire come upon you now may that fire come upon you now i release you i release you no matter how long you have been bound i release you in the name of jesus christ i release you male and female young and old this is zion in the name of jesus christ be delivered Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Yahweh. Yahweh. You'll be seated shortly. But I am seeing many people in business, but are under all kinds of yokes. And I'm seeing oil being poured on the ground. This is an anointing bringing breakthrough. If you don't believe it, don't worry. You can. But in the name of Jesus, anyone here under the sound of my voice, you are in business. And if there is any siege in the name Kapakos Katapakata, Rekete Prophete Bakata, in the name of Jesus, that siege is broken now. That siege is broken now. Help them, please. That siege is broken now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. For all of you who are here as Stevens in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this door that I saw open in the spirit. Oh, may it be so for you. May it be so for you. The sickness on this man. This man wearing yellow, the Holy Spirit keeps drawing me to him. This man holds the salvation of his family. But I'm seeing that there is sickness. The devil wants to put stroke in the name of Jesus. Let him go now and go forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of jesus hear me no matter how long it has been you should come to church and return back knowing you encountered jesus i'm seeing the power of god come on a woman an elderly woman this is what i'm seeing in my vision i don't know what this is for but i'm seeing the power of god this is not a young woman at least she should not be less than 50 55 upwards i just saw the power of god come on that woman and the lord is saying he's visiting her your children have been praying for you i don't know where that person is but in the name of jesus christ right now i decree whether inside all the overflows outside let there be a miracle for you right now let there be a miracle for you right now I'm hearing a name Justina who is Justina 
Justina. Who is Justina? What is your name? Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm from Cross River. Justina. Father, you have gathered us tonight. The person I'm seeing is you are wearing like yellow and red. Something head tie. This is what I'm seeing. Who is that? Please, if listen, if God gives a word, if it's not for you, just be patient. Doesn't mean that God is what is what's her name? Verify that what I'm saying. Madam, what is your name? Huh? No. Your name, I will pray for you, but this your name is your name is not Justine now. Madam, who is Josephine? What's your name? Your name is not Justina. Your name is Josephine. 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 That's what I'm saying. I will pray for you, but I said Justina. What's your name? Justina. Father, let me pray for her since she's out. Where are you from? Kaduna. In the name of Jesus, this spirit that has tied people in your family, I declare right now, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Madam, where are you coming from? Please help us. Is this mic working? Please. From Abuja here. Abuja. You're coming from Abuja here? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, please stand up. The plague of sickness over your life and your family. Is that true? I decree and declare right now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring you life by the Spirit. Let that plague of sickness and infirmity come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will return with marvelous testimonies. Testimonies of the supernatural hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for everyone who is out here, in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be healed now. Return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus everyone please let's pray father give me an encounter tonight in Jesus name please lift your voice as we pray father give me an encounter by your spirit tonight is someone praying give me an encounter tonight by your spirit Someone is praying. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. From the pages of my heart Let my worship begin that never rests To the God of all flesh You're my God and your name is Yahweh Your name is Yahweh Yahweh You're my King and your name is Yahweh your name is Yahweh Yahweh hallelujah God bless you welcome to church this is Koinonia please be seated hallelujah appreciate everyone thank you so much can we give minister Owe a great 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 God bless you thank you Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have to get to the word very quickly. It's such a strong anointing. I sense that even as a ministry, that God is shifting us to new and deeper levels of the anointing. One of the keys that control increase in the anointing is faithfulness. 
the Bible says he who, that is faithful in little is faithful in much or with much so when God commits a measure of grace it is expected that you commit yourself to ministering at that level with faithfulness with diligence and God who sees you in secret indeed will honor you praise the name of the Lord we're still teaching along the lines of the instruction that we receive teaching on the graces that are in this house tonight I'll be teaching on commanding the supernatural commanding the supernatural please write it down and Psalm 72 and verse 18 this is one of the graces that God has so lavishly granted us access to as a ministry among the many graces that are at work in this house is the grace for signs for wonders and for miracles and the church of the lord jesus christ is a supernatural church and it's important that we understand the dynamics of operating supernatural christianity otherwise jesus will not be glorified in our lives and through our lives and so i want you to pay attention i'll be as brief as possible hoping that we'll have some time to pray tonight psalm 72 and verse 18 he says blessed be the lord god the god of israel who only doeth wondrous things this is a very powerful statement that means that anything that is done that does not cause you to marvel and wonder was not done by god because if it is god there must be an element of wonder there must be he will do it in a way and a manner that must cause both the recipient of that blessing and the audience to marvel at the intelligence the wisdom the power and the grace of god psalms 118 and verse 23 we we'll look at four scriptures psalm 118 and verse 23 it says this is the lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes not just marvelous in our heart once it is the lord's doing it must bring with it an element of marvel an element of the supernatural beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of reason is his signature that everything he does must be marvelous in our eyes psalm 77 from verse 14 and 15 very powerful scripture it says thou art the god that doeth wonders thou hast declared thy strength among the people 15 it says thou hast with thy arm redeemed thy people the sons of jo jacob and joseph you are the god that doeth wonders exodus 15 the last verse and verse 11 exodus 15 and verse 11 who is like you lord in all the earth please keep the scripture there mm. nothing in this world Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. It says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? So the Bible recognizes that there are gods. He does not call them men. He calls them gods. And then he says, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises? It does not stop there. He says, doing wonders just keep verse 11 doing wonders please write this down the days of the supernatural the days of miracles signs and wonders are not over there has been a very subtle narrative that has crept into the church for a very long time 
and still continues to gain strength the proposition that the days of the supernatural the days of signs and of wonders are over to say the days of the supernatural are over is the same thing as saying God has died to say the days of the supernatural are over is the same thing as saying the church is dead our God is a supernatural God our God is a miracle working God from Genesis to Revelations we see the consistency of God as far as his supernatural operations is concerned and the Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 the a part it says for I am the Lord I change not I am the Lord my character is consistent I can bend my methods my approach can change but intrinsically I do not change I am the Lord and I change not Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 Paul himself was teaching us and the Bible says Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 he says did I get that right Jesus Christ the same today yesterday today and forever it talks about the consistency that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday he's the same today and he's the same forever Jesus Christ is the same yesterday he's the same today and is the same there are people who are not the same way you knew them both for good and for evil but the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday write this down miracles and the supernatural are the foundation of the Christian faith you have to understand and appreciate it that the miraculous and the supernatural are the foundations the pillars the foundation of the Christian faith the era of miracles are not over indeed they are the foundation of the Christian faith the Bible is a compendium of the miraculous the wondrous acts of God from Genesis to Revelations now I know that one of the reasons why let me just address this up front one of the reasons why people fear the supernatural one of the reasons why people fear the miraculous is because of a very sincere desire in their hearts to not dapple into extra biblical practices please look up it is it is a fear that many people have because in our world today we have all kinds of religion and even sadly among the Christian fold there are all kinds of practices that based on the authority of scripture qualify to be seen as extra biblical practices and practices that may not be consistent with the way God operates so in a bid to manage that fear many people have shut the door at anything that is supernatural in context in a bid to walk within the zone of safety and the zone of balance let me therefore say this God does not walk magic God is not a magician magic is a practice that is not derived from the operation of the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit it does not matter what advantage it seeks to provide are we together now magic based on the authority of Scripture is not how God works magic is largely demonic and is largely a practice that is vocally rooted in satanism god is a miracle worker not a magician the difference between a miracle worker and a magician is that relationship is not involved in magic but when god wants to work the supernatural and miracles 
it comes as a derivative of a relationship when you meet someone for instance some idol worshiper or some uh, practitioner of satanism he does not care your name he does not desire relationship with you he just wants to know what your problem is and he tells you the conditions to satisfy and whatever reward you desire is given to you but that is not the way god operates when god comes to you he does not just give you power he's interested in a relationship are we together god does not work magic now can i tell you this um in the kingdom we do not judge the the godliness of an operation by the advantage it produces we judge the godliness of an operation by the force that is behind it not just the result it produces because many of us here yeah, this is africa we're talking about there are many of us who through the means of superstition divination satanism and all kinds of idol practices have derived obvious benefits maybe some of us before we met jesus christ we came from families that were deeply rooted in idolatry and we have partaken of the fruits of those I those idol practices for instance people have received safety supposedly people have received healings people have received all kinds of things from some of these practices so chances are that we view god and because we live in a, a sociological context that just sees god as anything that provides good anything that provides good we call it god anything that seems to carry a semblance of evil we call it satan there are many good things that are not of god are we together now yes if you do not understand this you have already opened the door for all kinds of deception that means that if moses throws his rod just because it became a serpent and janus and jambes threw his own rod it also became a serpent it does not mean they are colleagues it does not mean they are brethren the Bible clearly shows you that it is not the manifestation of the rod becoming a serpent. It's the influence that is back of it. Because you see, many times when we are under pressure, when we are under pressure, our focus becomes the result, not the influence. So I, I need money. I'm broke and I'm hoping that I can have some means of financial blessings. And someone tells you there is someone it's not exactly evil and it's not like he's um it doesn't really do anything obviously bad um highest any the sacrifice ranges from chicken to goat there's nothing human at all and chances are that that serves as a succor especially under that pressure are we together and we expose ourselves into all kinds of things our focus is largely on the result not just the spirit that motivates it i told you here and i've taught you that the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can grant you access to the spirit realm any spirit at all is already higher than this three-dimensional realm hallelujah there is a condition for anything any miracle any supernatural manifestation to give glory to God number one it must be a derivative of the word number two it must be under the influence of the Spirit of God number three it must bless the saints and glorify Jesus these are the conditions for any spiritual process any spiritual process to be accredited as though it, as that it came from God if it does not pass through this test number one if it's not derived from the word number two if the holy spirit does not have a role to play in that process and then number three if it does not bless the saints and reveal jesus something is wrong hallelujah yes this is the basis upon which we can reject many good things because they did not pass that test God does not work magic, but he is a miracle worker. Write this down, please. God has always desired to display the supernatural on earth and among his people. There is no confusion as to the fact that it has always been and still remains the desire of God to bring the manifestation of the supernatural in the midst of his people. 
from genesis to revelation we see all kinds of supernatural interventions god stepping in revealing himself his power and his glory to his people from the old testament to the new testament we see all kinds of manifestations of the miraculous all kinds manifestations of power manifestations of grace and so on and so forth the bible has never hidden the fact that god himself desires that manifestation when you read genesis the very creation story is supernatural isn't it amazing and and also instructive that the first revelation the first the first um um person of the godhead that was revealed expressly in scripture was the holy spirit in the beginning the bible says genesis 1 god created the heavens and the earth it says now the earth verse 2 was dark void and formless and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the deep and then the supernatural begins let there be and the bible says there was and then he began to create recreate and do all kinds of supernatural things in the old testament we see all kinds of manifestations of the supernatural from moses abraham manna falling from heaven all kinds of supernatural judgments that happen to people instantly you read the bible and you see supernatural favor that happened to people these were all manifestations of the power of god beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of logic beyond the realm of reason then we come to the new testament and you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation time will fail me to begin to discuss them in detail from the incarnation jesus himself his incarnation was supernatural the virgin birth very supernatural is still a thing of contention today in fact is one of the basis for contention the contention of the christian faith the reality of what we have come to know theologically as the virgin birth number one the incarnation that god becomes a man the bible calls it a mystery and he said it's a great mystery great is the mystery of godliness god becomes a man then the virgin birth a young lady by believing the angel and cooperating with him is able to host the word and the word is born and named jesus how about his work on the earth from turning water to wine and all kinds of miracles that happen and then his resurrection from the dead his ascension the Bible lets us know that when he was coming, he came through the womb of a woman. But when he was returning, he levitated with honor into heaven and a cloud received him. And the angels came and said, why do you seek Jesus? He said, this same Jesus you see will return the same way he has gone. You look at the life of the early church, you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord suddenly. This was a miracle that was in the similitude of Ezekiel 37. Suddenly, there was such a manifestation, a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, it says, and they appeared to them. It was not said it was created, it appeared. That's supernatural. The tongues that came on their head appeared. To appear means that it came from the invisible realm and found expression in the midst of the people. Tongues like as of fire and sat on each one of them. And the Bible says, verse 4, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with tongues, you know, and all of that. And then when the people heard them speaking, it was a day of Pentecost. They came and they said, who are these crazy people who are drunk early in the morning? And Peter shot them and said, no, we are not drunk. This is only in the morning. He said, but this is that. This is that which was prophesied by prophet Joel. So the foundation of Christianity is the supernatural. To not believe in the supernatural, therefore, is to not believe in God. 
because God is supernatural. Please look up. Isn't it a mystery, ladies and gentlemen, how that I am on earth and I surrender my life and my heart to God who I may not have seen physically and yet I believe that I am all right, I am not sick, I am not mad, I am okay. And then not only that, I stand and I speak to him every day. Can you imagine to the carnal man or the natural man what it means to be praying around and you're saying, Father, I give you all the thanks. I thank you because you hear me. I bless you for this day. In the name of Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. And someone says, who are you talking to exactly? And you say, I'm talking to my Father who art in heaven. And he says, who is that? And he said, be careful. The next instruction is, hallowed be your name. Don't disrespect this man I'm talking to. You believe you are talking to the Lord. And then you have the audacity to believe that he talks back to you. Are we together now? Now many people doubt the supernatural. But you do not have any problem with picking up a metallic object produced by different companies hanging it on your ears and talking with boldness and not ignoring who is looking at you you dial a number and out of 7.6 billion people on earth it does not make a mistake it goes with digital precision to any part in the world you instruct it to then the person is talking to you ladies and gentlemen even planes cannot fly that they cannot cover that distance and yet do you not know that as at the time that call happens is no longer in this realm oh yes i'm here talking with someone and the person is right there in another nation even with the fastest of planes it will take hours and hours in the air to get there and yet with one dial we're talking and laughing and now you even have the audacity to be looking at the person. You are talking and looking at the person. You have, you, and you have never questioned what you are doing. And yet when we say there is a God in heaven who talks, who moves, who can heal, we say, are you sure? Oh, come on. How are you sure the person you are speaking to is not a demon who is standing on your phone? There are people who have not seen themselves physically for years, yet they don't miss themselves because there is a system, a bridge has been created. They communicate every day. And yet when it has to do with the supernatural, the moment there is a supernatural manifestation of the power of God, now we have a problem with it. How can someone be healed? Who you probably did not touch who had a condition diagnosed medically and we know that it will take this person months to recover and in a moment you invoke a name the name of Jesus and that person is healed that person is blessed how do you release words and tell someone in the name of Jesus your week is blessed then the person returns and say I can't believe what has happened to me the supernatural write this down miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature also defy the usual course of events upon the earth miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature and also defy the usual course of events upon the earth that means that these are manifestations supernatural manifestations that defy logic they defy the natural sequence the way things happen upon the earth the bible lets us know in Acts chapter 2 and verse 22 Acts chapter 2 and verse 22 
it says ye men of israel peter is speaking hear these words jesus of nazareth look up please a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him who did it god he used him god did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves have known so he says jesus a man approved of god that means it's a system of accreditation validating that he really came from me miracles signs wonders can i tell you this the church that jesus died for is not a weak and a beggarly church the church that jesus died for is not a negotiating church that sits down and we continue to be victims of situations and circumstances both human and demonic the church that jesus died for and the church that he's returning for is a supernatural church In Matthew chapter 10, when you read from verse 1, then we'll flip very quickly to verse 7. Matthew chapter 10. This was Jesus now, having mentored the disciples for a season. The Bible says he called unto him his 12 disciples and he gave them power, power, power against unclean spirits. That means that power has no effect on clean spirits. The moment you are a clean spirit, you are welcome. The power does not have any effect. But the moment you are an unclean spirit, that power was not designed to be silent. Power against unclean spirits. Not to talk to them, not to discuss with them, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. Verse 7. And he instructed them, as ye go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand next verse it says heal the sick with that power i gave you cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely give do you know what he's saying in other words do not just carry an empty message when you carry an empty message the people have a right to doubt my friend look at me come hold on hold on what was wrong with you it's all right where are you coming from from meduguri that's all right check yourself check yourself that's all right listen that's all right <laughs> help him he's still under the anointing that's all right listen it's okay take the mic away from him please my friend look at me whether you are a believer or unbeliever you are welcome to church this is the power of god in the name of jesus christ when i'm going to be making the altar call later on when you hear the altar call just run quickly and come and join the people here in the name of jesus god bless you thank you hallelujah are we together john chapter 20 john chapter 20 please write it down john chapter 20 from verse 21 john 20 john 20 from verse 21 and jesus said unto them peace be unto you someone prophesy peace to yourself peace one more time say peace be unto me peace he said as my father has sent me question how did the father send him as my father has sent me with the supernatural life supernatural message supernatural demonstration of that reality he says even so send i you I am not just sending you there is a way i sent you send you to where to business to ministry to politics it's not just to come and stand in front of a pulpit we've dealt with that already there is a way god sent us there is a way the world should know he's the one who sent us 
and that signature is the supernatural as the father jesus did not have to go around saying hey i've come everybody listen to me there were results that went before him manifestations of the power of god the sick getting healed everything happened and then when people say who is this he now said all of you come and he began to teach them as my father has sent me in john chapter 14 and verse 2 john chapter 14 verse 12 sorry john 14 please go to verse 12 he said verily verily i say unto you he that believes on me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than this you know there have been all kinds of interpretations of this scripture depending on whether you believe jesus was serious or not many people have watered it down and given a very nice excuse because they know when you make such a bold statement like this both life and people would demand a defense of this greater works but jesus said it greater works than this shall ye do because i go to my father in mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 we we'll read from verse 17 mark chapter 16 from verse 17 mark 16 from verse 17 mark chapter 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils when you use your name the demons will not go he says they shall speak with new tongues next verse they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover ladies and gentlemen who said it jesus jesus himself he spoke these words and he said this will happen these are not parables he really said it and he meant it until we restore the supernatural to the church not just blind fanatism but the supernatural as a demonstration of the fact that god is alive and he's still moving in the midst of his people can i tell you this if the supernatural begins to erode out of the church a day will come will come to church and only meet empty pews i guarantee you today in our world there are options i hope you know that oh yes sir there are options do not downplay the desperation of people and how far people can go when they are desperate we have no right to keep telling people don't go to idol worshipers don't go to anyone don't worship any other god just come to jesus now they come and then we tell them don't worry he will do something i, I spoke to him yesterday he just said he's still walking Are we together? Yes. The church that Jesus died for is a supernatural church. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is not for apostles. The supernatural is not for prophets. The supernatural, please look at me. The supernatural is not for those in ministry. The supernatural is for believers. The moment you come into this faith life, you have come into a supernatural life in every way. You must expect the supernatural, not just supernatural events, supernatural living. Not just supernatural events, supernatural living, that this becomes your default state. That means you get up in the morning, and it is possible that someone just comes to your office and shakes your hand and just because he touched your hand without knowing the person leaves and all of a sudden a, a, a disaster that should happen to him when those demons come they meet a system of defense who prayed for this one no a supernatural person touched this one listen to me listen the life that you received that you call zoe 
eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16. Just help those under the anointing. It says, for God so loved the world. Believers, look at me. Let's go back to elementary Christianity. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever, everybody say whosoever. He didn't say that the man of God he didn't say the American. He didn't say the European. He didn't say the African. That whosoever believes in him, listen, should not perish. But as a reward, you have. To have means it's been given to you. To have means you are not expecting. Shall have Zoe, the life of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me. And I want you to truly believe what I'm saying. The Bible says this is the record. That's a legal terminology. Many of you are, are legal practitioners here. This is the record that God has given us eternal life. I agree that from my background, I may not have anything. Help them. I agree that based on whatever it is, but you have eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Eternal life is not the life you will get when you get to heaven. No, no, no. Eternal life is the supernatural. God, by his spirit, coming to plant within your human spirit. The reality of heaven. The reality of the life, the power, the glory, the culture, the atmosphere of heaven. Implanted in a human spirit. This is not a preacher's sermon. This is what the Bible says. listen listen every one of you here who is in christ is already a partaker of this divine life hold on please listen listen the reality of divinity finding expression in humanity should not be doubted how did jesus enter the womb of mary that's the same way he entered your heart the way Jesus entered the womb of Mary is the same way. Don't you tell me how did it happen? The answer the angel gave Mary is still the answer I'm giving you. How shall these things be? The power of the highest. Just that I stand in front of an altar and I make a declaration. I hand over my life to Jesus and while they are laughing at me, a transaction is happening in heaven. The same way the Holy Ghost came and brought jesus the word into the womb of mary now he's arrived with his life hear me please sit down let me explain something for you if you do not understand this forget about a life of victory this is more than some charismatic talk no this is more than just some pentecostal talk this is truth from scripture. So, when that life comes, the spirit of the living God comes to tabernacle within a mortal man. A mortal man. Born of a woman. I know that you may come from a Yoruba region, Igbo region, Northern region, European region, American region. Help them please. But the moment you make this declaration, the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. You are connected back to your original place with all the benefits that follow that place. Let me tell you, when you know this, you will spend your life helping the lost to find Jesus. It's more than just evangelism. You are helping them. There is no other help that is greater than connecting people to Jesus. Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody he raised from the dead still died. But there is something you receive and not perish. If you receive healing, you will perish. 
if you receive breakthrough you can still perish but the life of god now please listen to me listen to me when you receive this supernatural life the next assignment of the holy spirit watch this because you see the activity of the new birth does not necessarily affect your mind the activity of the new birth is a spiritual affair so your mind may be unfruitful many times you just recited something a preacher said to recite and you didn't feel anything didn't fall most times didn't stand you just felt the peace of god and they clapped for you and you followed someone and chances are you can downplay the miracle that just happened to you because it was so easy and so cheap in one minute even if a room has been dark for 24 years the moment you put light light will not start and say let me respect the darkness in that instant the light comes so both the room that has been dark for two hours 10 days 100 years they all react the same way to light but when that light comes watch this just because you are a recipient of that life does not make you walk in the liberty of that life let's establish a few things here number one we have been called into a supernatural life based on the authority of scripture the church of the lord jesus is a supernatural church the supernatural should be nothing strange for us through us and with us salvation the new birth experience itself is supernatural that's what gives us the basis for manifesting the supernatural however just because you are a recipient of the life of god through the new birth experience does not mean you will walk in it experientially there is the dynamics of the supernatural and that's what i want to expose you to because there are many people as true as all i've said is you may spend the rest of your life living and allowing your life to be a misrepresentation of the power the grace the glory of god and tonight let god be true and every man a liar. If what I've said and all I've said is true, why then do we have preachers that are powerless, businessmen that are powerless, career people that are powerless, believers that are powerless, everything natural, the sequence of your life natural. There is nothing extraordinary in your life. When I look at your life and if it is true that you've been grafted into Christ through the activity of new birth, I should find that signature of the supernatural trailing you like a shadow, following you. A week should not pass without you having a supernatural testimony. Okay, apostle, I went in the midst of people and I'm listening. Uh-huh, what happened? And they just pushed me. Uh-huh, and what else? Yeah, I return back home. No, no, that story is not complete. Apostle, I got to a place that was full of unbelievers. Uh huh. I'm listening. What happened? They looked at me. We just said we just exchanged pleasantries, and I left. You left. Nothing happened from you, through you, to them. Jesus was not revealed. Nothing happened. The sick were not healed. Demons were roaming around and you were there. And you left. You waved them. They waved you back. How about conferences that are put together? And all kinds of attendants are there. Both humans and demons. Day one. Day two. Day three. Day four. They even came near the altar with the individuals who dropped the offering. And went back and nothing changed. At the end of it, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, such an expensive confession, the love of God, and you call it the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. And at the end of it, those demons still go back. How about missionaries who go to crusade grounds and they come in the name of Jesus, they say, 
and they preach and they tell the people that Jesus is Lord and when they are done people just sit down and laugh at them I don't mean to be sarcastic but how about ministries that share boundaries with other facilities that may not be Christ-like in their operation and yet for years as that church is there there has not been any impact around listen if you understand this you will know that you have been given the power that transform people where did you keep the reality of that life it's not just by bragging and saying i'm a man of god i'm apostle no great is the mystery of godliness god lives in me it is true brothers and sisters find a way of believing this god lives in me it was not so when i was born because i was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life i encountered him jesus who is the son of the living god today he lives in me and i believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything i'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of jesus so when someone comes to me and says apostle nothing is working in my life from pillar to post my life is empty what do you think i should do when i see such a person i am happy that you have met me because i am a blessing to you i can't be a cause me and jesus can't fail together me alone can fail i agree he will never fail but since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant inseparable two of us cannot fail together you carry this mentality when you get into an office you enter not as an employee you enter as an ark you have been entering as one who was employed who is being paid x amount of naira or dollars or pounds that is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system but when you know that beyond salary i am a blessing doors that has been trying the company has tried and tried to get those doors open suddenly when god wants to bless that company he gives them the privilege of employing you when you enter that office you don't have to tell them you have come the manager returns back and says how many staff do we have oh 26 now 27 who was the last person employed and they said one one gentleman like that okay I've noticed in the last one week something has happened here something supernatural has happened have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came Please hear what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you truth from scripture. You are not just an employee. No. You are not just a business partner. What you are bringing is more than capital. What you are bringing is the presence. Divinity. The supernatural. They bring you into a ministry as a pastor. You are not just one of the 30 pastors. No. No. With all due respect, every other person can believe what they believe. But you know there is an implication. I'm sharing with you my mindset. I'm sharing with you my beliefs. The mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. Your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders. Your life becomes a, a marvel first to you. Not because you are anything special in yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you, these are not just, these are not cunningly devised fables. These are truths that are provable. God can live in a man.
you can have something you were not born with you can have something that was not given to you in a university you can have something that was not given to you in your nation the reality of the life of god at work in a human spirit listen hey please hear me listen to me our fathers of faith men like tl osborne men like rw shambach these men and women carried this revelation they came to africa they shifted climate with power and with grace ordinary men mighty god ordinary men powerful god ordinary men all wise god ordinary men el shaddai I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord because our cities and respectfully speaking our churches are losing the supernatural element there's all kinds of cunningly divine fable device fables manipulations of darkness the sick remain sick the oppressed remain oppressed all kinds of stories Hear me. Now, please listen. In addition to the reality of eternal life, as you walk with God, you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you. Not just as one who brought the life of God, but as God himself. He begins to lead you through a process. He does not just reveal power. You shall receive power after, after, after. God does not empower you when he's building you. He empowers you when he's sending you. So when you come to Jesus, stop looking for power. Come to me. It is the making that happens. Empowerment is at the point where you are being sent. Not when you are made. Listen to me, because something is about to open up in your life. Believe me when I tell you this. Many of here, you here looking at me are men and women of God. Most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of being disciplined young men and women. Most of what we do in church is not, it's not the supernatural. It's just a manifestation of flesh from ill-cultured men and women of God. display of the flesh for the purpose of self-glorification that your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness not because of what you are saying but because of what you are carrying what you are carrying first before what you are saying You will be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit. All kinds of impartations. All kinds of liftings. This is not about Joshua Selman. This is every believer's heritage in Christ. But hear me, brothers and sisters. There is one thing I know. And this is why you came to church today. Listen to me. Somewhere in your Christian experience... When God is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations, he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces. Now listen to my story. There was a time I have shared with you a few of my visions here. Just pay attention. I'm in this vision and I'm seeing an endless sea of people from the north to the south the east and the west and then these people begin to cry to me and say apostle there is no food and there is no water and then i said who is the cause and they were all pointing to me it was a whole generation i said me why would i be that wicked and they said you are the one and then i made up my mind that i was going to go 
but I had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me they were trying to pursue me that's what even took me to that room to be hiding it was upstairs I made up my mind that if I perish I perish but I have to save these people as soon as I open the door here stands this giant ancient man with beards now I know it was the Holy Spirit but he stood there and he said give me your hands he said we will walk together my hands were so tiny in his hands and yet he held me and we began to move we began to move jumping from one level to the other I've shared with you my encounters because you are about to receive something tonight I was worshiping the Lord many years ago and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and then the Lord speaks to me and says son from today I give you my presence as a gift I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying and then I see this huge being standing and he said from today he will walk with you I said what is his name and he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence walk with you this is why you see some of these manifestations hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.